and welcome to lesson 14 of this Elizabeth I GCSE lesson series. You will need the lesson notes booklet with you, which you should have, because it should have been sent to you, or you can find it in the description at the bottom of this video. You will need to be on page 24 for lesson 14. Okay, let's get started. Right then, way back in lesson 1 of this series, it seems like a lifetime ago, we looked at this table or this overview diagram here, which shows you the different parts of Elizabeth I course. And we spent the first seven or eight lessons or so of this series, lesson series, looking at the blue section, looking at the problems that Elizabeth faced and how she overcame those problems. We have mainly been focused in the last five, six lessons on the yellow section about challenges to Elizabeth at home and abroad. We've looked at the plots that she faced, the Rodolphe, the Throckmorton, the Babington plot. Um, we looked at the, before that, we looked at the revolt of the Northern Earls. We looked at the relationship with Spain, the political and religious rivalry, the place of Drake in stoking the antagonism between Elizabeth I and the Spanish. We've looked at outbreak of war with Spain, the reasons for that, and we have looked at the Armada. So you are going to do some revision of this material as part of your smart task for today's lesson. So you need to um, try, do on a separate piece of paper, you have a copy of the yellow boxes here in your um, lesson notes pack. So what I want you to do is to try and write down on that separate bit of paper everything you can remember for each of the bullet points. So you've got uh, nine bullet points there. <clears throat> try and write down everything you can everything you can remember about each of the bullet points in the yellow box. So it's plots and revolts at home, it's relations with Spain, it's the outbreak of war with Spain, and it's the Armada. So pause this and off you go. Okay, so you should have tried to write down all the things that you can remember. Uh, you will find on page 25, and let's hope you didn't cheat and look at this before you did your little notes from memory, uh, you will find a little overview of all of those different problems. The only thing that's missing is the stuff on the Armada, but you can look back to last lesson to find that. Um, have a little check and see how much you could remember, what bits were missing, maybe jot down the bits that were missing, um, so that you've got a good little idea of how much you can remember about all of those threats. Right then, let's move on to the focus of today's lesson, which is Elizabethan education. Now, what you have in front of you here is a little overview, a little mission statement from the Sutton Trust. The Sutton Trust is a modern organisation that was founded in 1997 and it's designed to try and help students from disadvantaged backgrounds get a better start in education. So it's designed to help them get access to university. It's designed to close the gap between poorer students from poorer backgrounds and their richer peers. In education, generally, the richer somebody is, the um, more middle class, the background that they come from, the more help that they get from their parents, then generally they do better. And so this means there's a gap between the performance of poorer students and more well-off students. And so the Sutton Trust as an organisation tries to close that gap, tries to help disadvantaged students and tries to give them um, a little bit of a leg up so they can catch up with um, students who come from more affluent backgrounds. Have a little look at this video about what the Sutton Trust does uh, in terms of trying to help people from poorer backgrounds get access to top universities. We are the Sutton Trust. We believe that everyone should be able to go to leading universities regardless of their background. Do you want to spend a week with us this summer? You get to study the subject that you love and the subject that you've chosen to do at A-level and hope to go and do in the future. Pick a university, pick a course and find out what university life is really like. 
it's just given me a glimpse of how university actually works and really runs. Like I kind of actually feel like a student. Held at leading universities across the UK, Sutton Trust summer schools are completely free wherever you choose to go. I learned a lot about the university life and the misconceptions surrounding it. Being here, it's like I can see myself fitting in, I can see myself making friends, I can see myself like not really struggling. With subjects spanning the arts, humanities, sciences or engineering, you'll experience taste of lectures and workshops with leading academics and find out if the course you're interested in really is for you. The interactions between us and like the lecturers and how welcoming they are to like our questions and it doesn't feel like you're asking a silly question. I learned that this is a very different subject than what I initially thought it would be. Gain skills and knowledge to make the best university application you can. The programme has allowed me to meet new people and gain like, a lot more skills that I didn't have before I came here. Sutton Trust Summer School students are four and a half times more likely to take a place at a leading university. The experience in the summer school really influenced my university uh, choice and experience. It gives you the confidence um, to apply. For someone who's, not, who's unsure about um, applying to a Sutton Trust Summer School, there's no reason for them not to apply because it's one of the best weeks I've had in my, in my whole life to be honest. So you might be thinking, why the, why the heck's he showing us that? What's that got to do with Elizabethan education? Well, it's to draw a very clear contrast. So the stated aim of the Sutton Trust, and actually the stated aim of um, every government for the last 20 or 30 years, has been to close the gap between people from disadvantaged backgrounds and people from more advantaged backgrounds and try and make uh, society fairer and try and make society a place where everybody can get high quality education regardless of their background. It was the complete opposite in Elizabethan England. So you can see from this little chart in front of you here that um, if you were a noble girl or a noble boy, you would throw somebody who was in the nobility, somebody who was rich, some people who had maybe connections with the royal court, um, you would get a private tutor and then if you were a boy you would go to university not if you were a girl if you were a middle class girl or boy then so your your parents were relatively wealthy maybe they were business people um you get to go to a petty school a grammar school and then a university for boys you get to go to a dame school for girls that would be a very, very small percentage of the population that were either middle class boys and middle class girls or noble boys and noble girls. The vast majority of the rest of the population, over 85% lower class boys and girls, had no formal education at all whatsoever. So the stated aim of the Sutton Trust is to try and close the gap between poorer and more affluent children the aim of education in Elizabethan society was to actually maintain the inequality, was to maintain the privilege of the small few at the top and to keep the rest of the people in a state of ignorance, really. Elizabethan society was supposed to remain static. The rich people and the nobility and the middle class were supposed to stay at the top and the lower class people were supposed to stay at the bottom. And there was not supposed to be any avenue for lower class people to rise to a different station or to challenge the power and the elite at the top. So education was important, but it was only important if you were rich, affluent in the nobility and you had access to it. You didn't have any access to education if you were poor and the vast majority of people were poor. Now, having said all that, Education was very, very, very important to Elizabeth, and she was an incredibly talented student and a very, very intelligent woman. And um, her education and the education of lots of noble and middle class children was not a walk in the park. It was some serious discipline study. They started early. They studied lots of different subjects. They studied Latin and classics, and they had to work very, very hard um, to become accomplished in the 
subjects that they were studying. And Elizabeth thought that education was really important. She would had access to a good education, and so she wanted other noble girls. She was very interested in girls' education and middle-class girls to also have a good education. She wasn't that bothered um, by... Well, she certainly wasn't bothered at all about poorer people having education. It was during Elizabeth's reign that um, extra colleges were added to um, Oxford and Cambridge University. She was a patron of education and she wanted noble people, keep remembering that, she wanted noble people to have a good education. She wanted them to develop their um, skills and to be well trained and accomplished. Have a little look at this talking about Elizabeth's own early education. Children in the 16th century had to join the starched and corseted adult world as quickly as possible. They were expected to look like their parents and to behave like them. Even slight misdemeanours were severely punished. One royal tutor advised, never have the rod off a boy's back and the daughter especially should be handled without cherishing. But Elizabeth was lucky. Her tutors belonged to the new school, which thought that kindness was a better teacher than the cane. But then the young princess was a model pupil, and she studied languages from the age of four. She became fluent in French, Italian, Latin and Greek. Sur une cheveux tout fou et maillé de couleur, d'un million de fleurs. On mente que scrivesti choqui au vide, persuasum est autoritate maiorum. Cur itacit, nihil tu me But it was how she learned languages that mattered as well. She was taught by the method of double translation. This means that the little girl had to translate a passage from Latin into English and then back again into Latin, getting it absolutely right, word for word. Now for most children, this kind of thing would have been an absolute torment, but Elizabeth seems to have reveled in it. She must have had the mind of a computer programmer or an expert solver of crossword puzzles, because she continued to do translations for the whole of the rest of her life. She did them for fun and for relaxation, but she also did them as a kind of mental discipline to keep her emotions under control, just as nowadays some people might practice yoga or meditation. So Elizabeth was an incredibly talented student, but the type of education that she had was, was very challenging. Um, the focus on languages, the need to translate, the discipline that was needed was really tough um, and for her to be able to do it shows how intelligent she was. For the rest of the lesson we're going to focus on the different types of education that different sect sections of um, Elizabethan society would receive. So um, boys and girls but also different um, different rungs on the social uh, ladder. So we're going to look at nobility, we're going to look at middle class, and we're going to see the different types of education that they had. So on page 26 of your lesson notes booklet, you will find a table that looks like this. On the left-hand column, it says the members of society, and on the right-hand column, it talks about the type of education that they receive. So for the member of society, you need to know about the nobility, the middling sort, uh, merchants and craftsmen, um, craftsmen and yeomen, um, and you need to know about education for girls as well. And you will find those headings in the excerpts from the textbook on pages 27 onwards in your lesson notes template. So. You're just going to jot down the, the, the member of society, so I said the nobility, or merchants and craftsmen, or um, the middling sort, or a yeoman, or girls, and you're going to jot down on the right hand side what type of education they receive. Okay, so um, you're going to pause this, you're going to do that task, use the excerpts, excerpts from the uh, textbook to help you do that, 
uh, and then we'll come back in a moment well more than just a moment um <laughs> we'll come back in a bit uh, and see what you've come up with Okay, welcome back. The main thing that you should have got in your notes in that table is the way in which education was designed to be suited to the needs or the perceived needs of different members of society. So the nobility were educated in their homes and then they might be sent to a different noble's family to finish their education, but they were being educated to be accomplished members of the nobility so they're doing lots of languages and um, they're learning latin they are learning um about music and dancing and good manners and boys would learn horse riding and they would learn how to be a, a sort of an accomplished nobleman girls who were educated noble girls they're learning needlework and, and music and singing and translations and they're being taught how to be accomplished um no noble women for the future who let's face it the thinking would make a a good wife of another nobleman um the grammar schools for um the bright boys of well-off families in the towns there's a lot of emphasis on translation and reciting knowledge and being able to um to memorize passages of Latin or passages of the Bible. It's not particularly practical, um, but it's about discipline. Um, and it's about allowing those people to converse with members of the nobility uh, so that they have a similar type of education. And the merchants and yeomen, th their children were being taught uh, more practical things, arithmetic, things that were gonna help them in their professions in the future. And of course, girls did not go to university. There were dame schools for girls, but girls did not go to university. And furthermore, poorer children did not have access to any formal education at all whatsoever. So all of this education is simply reinforcing the social inequality that existed in Elizabethan society. And so it is doing the exact opposite of the stated aims of the Sutton Trust that we looked at at the start of the lesson. What the education system in Elizabethan England is supposed to do is supposed to train and equip the nobility and the wealthy people in society to be able to maintain their position, to be able to develop certain skills that they would need to maintain their position. And so effectively, they are, they are able to keep control of knowledge and keep control of power therefore you know somebody once said knowledge is power so if the people at the top of society have that knowledge and have that education and the people at the bottom don't then that enables the people at the top to maintain inequality and to keep the people at the bottom in a place of subservience and in a place where they can't rebel or they can't overthrow the system Okay, you will find on page 31 for the last task of this lesson, um, uh, a look at a four mark type question. This is the type of question that comes as the first question in your Elizabeth exam. This one's described two features of the theater in early Elizabethan England, where you'll be looking at the theater and leisure and pursuits in next lesson. So it's not necessarily important that you understand the knowledge associated with this because you haven't done it yet it's more the structure of this answer so describe two features describe effectively means identify something and then explain it so we've got here plays began to become more secular as your identification of the feature people found religious plays boring because they already knew the ending so people like shakespeare began writing comedies and tragedies to entertain the audience more creating a rise in popularity for the theater okay so more secular more popular second one theater was for everyone in brackets rich or poor there's the feature this is because there were different levels of admittance the poor could pay a penny to stand right next to the stage in cramped conditions whereas people like the queen and the nobility would have private seating areas with servants that were much more luxurious and expensive so there you go there's two features of the theater in early elizabethan england 
you identify a feature and then you explain it. What you are going to do is have a go at answering the question, describe two features of Elizabethan education. So you're going to identify an issue or a, a feature rather, you're going to identify that feature and then you are going to explain it. And you can, you've got plenty of information that you can use and you've got plenty of um, knowledge you can draw on from the work that you've just done. So have a go at that four mark question, identify a feature, explain it, identify another feature, explain it, and you can send your answer to your teacher where they can mark it for you and give you some feedback. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. And if we go back to where we were at the start in terms of the overview of this course, you will see that in this lesson, when we started to look at education, we have moved into the pink colored box. We are into the last of the three sections of this Elizabethan course. So next lesson is going to focus on leisure and pastimes that Elizabethans enjoyed. And then we will move on to the problems of the poor and the uh, way in which Elizabethans dealt with that. So until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I look forward to lesson 15 when we will be focusing on Elizabethan leisure, sport and pastimes. Till then, take care, stay safe, goodbye.